Hello everyone, this is Shannon for Hero Arts. In this video, I'm going to use the January 2020 My Monthly Hero Kit to build this card. We're going to go beyond the bouquet and create this full panel out of some of the dies from the kit. I'm also going to share with you some of my ink blending tips to make coloring these die cuts fast and easy. This is all of the floral leaves and butterfly dies that are included in this kit. I'm going to use most of these dies here and die cut out several of them to fill this panel. I have some Dove white cardstock here and I'm just going to lay them out on this cardstock, use a little bit of tape to hold everything down, and then run it through my die cutting machine. So I went ahead and die cut all my die cuts I need to create my panel out. I have one large butterfly, two of almost everything else, three of that flower type on the left, and nine leaves. I use the leaves to really fill up the space of the panel. I'm not going to create some masks. The masks are going to make the ink blending really easy and precise. I'm going to create my masks out of this clear contact paper. Contact paper is one of my favorite non-crafty crafty tools and it die cuts really well. This is just a little scrap that I have and if you're not familiar with contact paper, people typically use it to line their shelves and I actually got this from my um, local dollar store. So I went ahead and die cut these three flowers out and these flowers I made masks for because I want to ink blend just the center of that flower there and the other two I want it to be a little bit easier to ink blend the top portion of the flower and make sure I don't get any of my flower color down where my green of the stem would be. To kind of fine tune these masks I do need to do a little trimming. I just trimmed out the center of that flower there and here for the last two masks I'm just going to trim off the flower but I'm going to keep both the flower top and the stem bottom because I need both of those for my ink blending. You can definitely use masking paper instead of contact paper. I just like the contact paper because it's clear and it's reusable. I can use that contact paper over and over and over again. Now I'm going to move on to ink blending. I'm going to use the reactive inks to do my ink blending today. They ink blend very well and I'm going to use a really small ink blending brush. You definitely need a ink blending tool that's on the smaller size because we're going to do some kind of fine ink blending here. And for this first flower I'm using taffy reactive ink and I'm going to ink blend a gradation where it's darker on the edges and lighter in the center. I'm going to repeat that process for this second flower the same type and that I think that gradation just helps those flowers to really pop. We're now going to move on to the leaves. I have two colors picked out for the leaves. I'm going to start with my lighter color, which is Key Lime Fizz, and I'm just going to ink blend over basically the main part of the leaves. And this goes really quickly because I'm just plopping down the color. Once I finished ink blending that Key Lime Fizz, I'm now going to move on to my darker color. Now I'm going to use kind of a maybe an untraditional color. This is Blue Raspberry, but as you can see over the green, it really has a nice transition. It really kind of brings out like a forest or Kelly green color and it's really easy to create that gradation just kind of blending along the stem and a little bit on the leaves. We're now going to move on to another flower. I'm going to start with the yellow here. This is Lemon Drop and just ink blend the really kind of roughly the flower portion of these flowers. This goes really quickly because I'm not trying to achieve a nice smooth gradation here. Just kind of choppy, kind of splotchy is okay. I'm now moving on to an orange. This is creamsicle. Just going to add it to kind of like the underside of the flower. This adds a little shadow and just makes this flower a little bit more interesting and pop. Now I'm going to move on to the stem. Now this stem is really easy to color. It's not very difficult thanks to the mini brushes and um, just the way the position of the flowers. So I'm not worried about overlapping the green on the yellow here it's pretty easy to keep them separate and then I just use my two greens here again just to create a nice little gradation on that stem as well now I'm moving on to the butterflies and I have two blues picked out for these I'm going to start with my lightest blue and kind of blend from the body of the butterfly outward creating a nice little gradation doing on to both the smaller butterflies and the big butterfly again starting from the center of the butterfly and blending out creating a nice gradation with that party. Now I'm moving on to my other color. This is blue Hawaii and I'm just going to ink blend from the edges in now with this blue Hawaii. I'm being careful here not to lose that soft gradation that I got from the pool party because I do like that kind of pop. I think it helps it pop a little bit just because I have a little bit of that white of the paper still visible between the two colors. So I'm not actually overlapping blue Hawaii with um, pool party very much here at all. Kind of keeping them a little separate but two gradations with both those colors and I think that really helps to make the butterflies pop. 
So now that I've ink blended all my butterflies, I'm now going to move on to some of my other flowers. And these remaining flowers require masks. This first mask here, I'm just going to pull off. If you remember this mask, I just cut out the center of it. And I just placed it right down on my flower as close as I could get it to align. I'm not worrying about absolute perfection here. I just want to get it fairly lined up with the center. I'm going to start with Lemon Drop again, ink blend the center, and then add a little shadow with Creamsicle. Then I'll remove the mask, put the mask on my next flower, and then repeat this process. And as you can see, that contact paper does a really great job of masking the rest of the flower so that only the very center is colored with our yellow and orange. I'm now going to trim off the stem from this flower, and I'm going to place the flower mask back on top because now we got to ink blend the stem, and I don't want to get any of that green on the flower. This is definitely um, a really helpful time to use this mask because that, that stem is so very close to the petals. So even if I was very, very careful with my mini ink blending tool, it would be very difficult to avoid getting any of those greens on the petals. So the masks are very, very helpful for this part. And again, I'm just using my two greens, the, the Key Lime Fizz and the Blue Raspberry, which I guess is not really a green. And now I'm going to move on to my last two uh, sets of flowers. This, if you remember these masks, I removed the top flower and kept that, but I'm and also kept the stem. So right now I'm just sticking down the stem portion of the mask down on to my flowers, and then I'm going to do the ink blending of the flower. And I have um, this really pretty fruit punch color picked out for these flowers. I just love this color. It's just so pretty. I had to use it for two flowers just because I love it so much. I'm going to, again, ink blend a little gradation, keeping it kind of darker at the base of the flower and getting lighter towards the top. I'll then remove the mask and then I'll place that on my second bud. I'm now going to ink blend this flower the exact same way, keeping that um, color kind of darker or more concentrated at the base of the flower and getting lighter towards the top. Now that I've ink blended my two sets of flowers, I'm now going to blend the stems for the flowers. So I've already moved the backing of the contact paper for the top portion of the flowers. I'm going to place that mask down onto the flower and then I'll ink blend. And again, that mask, just make sure I don't get any of this green color on the flower, keeping the flower and the stem separate. So ink blending is really easy. Now I'll just remove the mask and put that bud on the other bud. And here I'm going to do this second flower here. Same thing, put the flower mask on the top portion of the flower and then just ink blend the stem with my two greens. I do want to quickly point out that lining up these masks don't have to be absolute perfection. You just need to get that mask kind of right along the border. For those stems where it's a little bit more spindly, I didn't even bother lining up the stem part of the mask with the stem of the, the uh, die cut. I just made sure that top part of the stem was lined up. So that was made sure I didn't get any of that flower color there. So now I'm going to arrange all these die cuts. I have an A2. Uh, grid acetate panel here. I actually made this myself with a marker um, and um, two, uh, two pieces of acetate to kind of trap in the marker portion. This is just really helpful to make sure that I keep all my florals and leaves and butterflies, everything within a A2 um, diameter, so a four and a quarter by five and a half uh, rectangle. And I'm just going to kind of play with these until I get the arrangement just right. But um, if you don't have an A2 panel of acetate that's a grid like this, that's totally fine. You can use an A2 panel of acetate, just plain acetate. You can even use an A2 panel of cardstock as well. Um, but you do want to make sure that um, whatever tape you use, which you'll see me use here in the second part once I get my arrangement here, you remove the stick because you don't want that tape to stick too much to that A2 panel that's in the back here because we need to peel all these images off and d add some foam tape to the back. So here I'm using painter's tape. This is well used painter tape. I already removed some of the stick by just placing the tape on my pants or my clothes to kind of pick up some of that fuzzies and that removes some of the stick. And I'm now going to place these t this tape all over basically these die cuts, kind of holding all those die cuts in place. Then I'll carefully peel these die cuts away from that acetate panel 
but making sure they're still all stick together in this arrangement that I like. Now I have a bunch of foam squares here. I'm going to place them on the back side of all of these die cuts, um, kind of evenly dispersed all over. I even have some really tiny little squares as well for some of those really tiny little leaves and tips of the flowers. I just want this to be well supported. So I have basically foam squares all over this panel here and now I'm going to remove the backing of that and just actually put that aside for a second because I want to adhere this panel of arctic cardstock. This panel is a little bit smaller than an A2 panel. It is four by five and a quarter and I'm going to adhere it down onto a top folding card base made from Dove uh, cardstock and then I will grab that die cut panel that we created with all little foam squares and the backings already moved and just kind of center it here on that blue panel and then stick it down and then I'll carefully remove the uh, painters tape here. I did have one little boo-boo where it kind of separated the very tip of that butterfly you see here so I'm going to grab a little bit of glue, place a little bit of that glue there and reattach kind of those layers of the cardstock back together and you would never know that that happened. And now I'm going to move on to just kind of doing fine tuning. I have a little stem here that I didn't like so I trimmed it because it was exposed and it looked a little strange. And and I didn't actually even use this fifth or I'm sorry ninth leaf here but you can save that it's handy to kind of fill in some spaces with that leaf once you turn it over and you remove the painters tape and you don't think you've filled in that space well enough but I didn't even need it I liked how my panel looked as is so I'm now going to create my sentiment here I have some clear embossing ink I'm just going to stamp it onto some white cardstock the sentiment is from the stamp set included in the January kit I'm going to dip it in some gold embossing powder then tap off the excess and then I will heat set with my heat tool. I then will die cut this sentiment with this kind of sentiment strip die that's also included in the kit. It creates a nice little kind of flag edge there and I went ahead and trimmed it down a little bit and also added some foam squares to the back side and now I'll just kind of stick this down to the card front get make sure I get it kind of nicely arranged with the edge and once I get that all stuck down my card is done. I now hold the card up to the camera so you can get a good look at all these flowers, leaves, butterflies, this basically this full panel that we created with these die cuts. It's very colorful and lots of beautiful gradations that um, the ink blending allows you to achieve very very easily and um, pretty quickly a lot faster than if we were to color all these images in with markers or watercolors. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If you'd like any more information on the products I use please check out the links below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.